Consciousness, the final frontier. These are the voyages into the universe universe between your ears. ears. Our mission, to explore collective wisdom, seek out amazing secrets, and spread the message of personal potential. All right, so thanks everybody. Um, This is Tim Starr. And my, my co-host, Gabby. This is Gabby. Yeah. How you doing, Gabby? All right. So we're, we're uh, happy to have uh, the guest with us today that we have, Bree Seeley. She's an inspirational woman who supports women around the world to bring their visions to life. She's motivated by a deeply held belief that every woman deserves to live a life that inspires her and her work reflects this deep remembering of the possibility, nay, inevitability, that our desires hold. Through her book, podcast, and six-month training, Permission to Leap will guide you through the process of leaping from the day you commit to the day you land softly on the other side. A catalyst, speaker, and author, she's a regular contributor for the Huffington Post and Influensive, hope I've got that right, and is known by many for her tell-it-like-it-is, out-of-the-box guidance that creates massive and epic changes in every woman she encounters. Bree has been featured on NBC's The Today Show, Forbes, Inc., Medium, PBS, Free Enterprise. She received the Outstanding Small Business Award from the Los Angeles Mayor's Office and the Small Business Development Center in 2016. All right, Bree, you have a resume. I do. Thank you for joining us. So 10 years of entrepreneurship gets you. Nice yeah. long bio. <laughs> yeah. Well, there's some interesting stuff from your background too. Is you know, you started out, I saw five years old, you were coaching college students on something. Well, not coaching, but my mom ran a college bookstore and when I was, she was a single mom. And so I spent a lot of time at that college growing up trying to entertain myself. I was also an only child and, you know, finding cool things to do. And a lot of times what I found was helping to train her college students and teaching them how to count change and running the cash register, (laughs) you know, all the things. So I would go to work with mom and restock the shelves and you know do all that stuff so i have technically been training people for 30 years Mm -hmm. and uh started leadership stuff i mean i i started like a babysitter's club when i was in middle school and immediately jumped onto my executive board when i joined a sorority and just kind of have always been in you know leadership and guidance positions just so you're a wallflower is what you're saying well, it's funny. I used to be. I used to be. I don't, it wasn't really until my sorority that I started to really have a voice and like be able to speak up and not shrink when I got into a room full of people. Cool. So, so I, I think we're going to get into a, a, a juicy conversation here. And I'm, I'm just going to railroad you, Gabby, for a minute. Well, um, it, it, it's, a, it's a privilege, uh, Brie, because, um, yeah. you know, when I, whenever I come across people who made it, their life purpose, uh, you know, helping other people. Um, you know, remember that Chinese saying that, uh, you know, if you want to be happy for an hour, like, you know, uh, eat something or whatever that uh, proverb says. I take a nap, I think they said. And if you want to be like happy for a day, go fishing, you know, they said, uh, I don't rem- remember the whole thing, but if you want to be happy for a lifetime, help, you know, help uh, the other. Mm-hmm. Um, so, it looks like, and uh, very curious. I was looking at your podcast, your know, Leap uh, podcast, right? Um, inspirational stories from all these women, um, and uh, you know, there are interesting uh, topics addressed. Uh, uh, but I was wondering, uh, and Tim and I, we were talking about this. Why are you not extending this to us, to the males? <laughs> oh, I have some men. There's for sure you know? one man that's already up, Lamar, mm-hmm. who's one of my good, good, good friends. Yeah. His podcast is already up um i have a couple on the podcast coming up like next week or the week after Mm -hmm. and then um brian strone is coming out later this year daniel thomas i'm interviewing later this year so yeah yeah now we don't have to go shopping for skirts (laughs) (laughs) i uh i've just kind of always known that women have been marginalized for a really long time and it's not that that means then that men's voices need to be diminished but women need to have a platform to be able to share their voices and kind of what i've found is 
that now that we're getting these platforms to share our voices, a lot of women don't know what to do with it. And they don't know how to say yes to it. And they don't know how to start embracing that part of themselves, um, which is part of why I wrote the book in the first place was it's literally like, this is exactly what you're going to face when you finally say yes, when you commit to this. These are all the phases that you're going to go through. And now they're not steps. They're not like, go do this and go do this and go do this. It's like when you make a commitment, these are probably some of the things you're going to face and you're going to go through and that you're going to have to dive into on your own. And like really just guiding people through that process because, you know, as much as there's some really great ladies out there doing great things in the world, there's an even larger amount of women who are terrified to even say yes to what that looks like. Because there's literally, they don't know how, and they don't know what's to come after they say yes. Mm -hmm. I, that's, I that's, for the most part, though, I mean, um, women who have other commitments and they have, uh, you know, life was uh, happening and they have uh, college loans, they have mortgages to pay, and any leaps like that involve a huge amount of risk sometimes, right? So, I mean, how do you even overcome this i mean there are constraints here, you know I mean, so the thing i i always say and and the episode going live with brian scrone on my podcast about this is about the same thing mm -hmm. whether you say yes to your leap or whether you say no there are risks and rewards involved with both sides mm -hmm. and when you make that decision you just really have to decide what risks are more important to you Re what rewards are more important to you and you make your decisions based on that because there's, there are risks, if I decided not to write this book, mm -hmm. there were massive, massive risks associated with it. Mm. From all the leaps I've taken, if I decided moving to Los Angeles was a huge risk, huge. Where are you, you moved from? Um, well, I moved from Seattle, but I grew up in the Midwest and I've lived in Europe and all over, but not moving to me had even more risks associated with it than moving had. And so it's really easy to look at the leap and be like, oh, there's so many risks involved with it. But a lot of people don't, they fail to look at not leaping mm -hmm. and what the risks are associated with that because there is an equal number. The risk of being stagnant, uh, the risk of not realizing your full potential, all of that is not, like they're not perceived as risks, right? Uh, but, they are. Well, but they are. Well, yeah. I'm going to jump in on that too because part of that, equation is that we get comfortable is the word that wants to come out we, but we you know the the pain that we're in where whatever it might be and at whatever level of, of consciousness or awareness that we have of it is still we know it's a known quantity right we we've lived through it to this point we know what we're dealing with whatever is out there whatever we might be taking the risk to go for even though it might look gorgeous and perfect and it's it's our bright shining future it's still unknown and we've got there's that built in that lizard brain thing going on that that says change is is bad change is going to kill you and yeah. it's not a logical thought necessarily and i talk so. about this a lot in the book too is this idea of the spiritual world versus the physical world the physical world is what we can currently see and touch right mm. but we're surrounded by energy and possibility and all that a leap of faith is, is literally taking something that you cannot yet see in the spiritual world and bringing it to life in the physical world. And everyone always wants the physical world part first. Mm. Like, well, when, when I have proof or when I have like a sign, then, then I'll take our, my leap. But it doesn't, the energy doesn't move from physical to spiritual. It moves from spiritual to physical. And that's any leap of faith requires that that intangibility that unknown um so yeah i address a lot of that in the book as well yeah, yeah. so as, as i was uh, actually reviewing um the theme of your book uh and we're kind of like team and i um we are right there with you uh with the um, you know everything happening in the spiritual first and the manifestations come into this material world the seed level you know this is all um the desire and thought and all of this then coming down to us. And so I guess, uh, <laughs> team, I will go with my first question. <laughs> what, Jumping what, at the bit. Go yeah, ahead. Yeah, what, what do you most strive for? You know that uh, the leap is 
you know, the process and there's a methodology to it and the mindset, right? But what are you leaping to? What do you most strive for in your life? Uh, accomplishment, security, love, power, excitement, knowledge, or, or something else? Um, I looked at this question last night and the, the, I guess I strive to be of service. And mm -hmm. in a way that I think is maybe different than if you say that, like where people's minds go. So for me, the book mm -hmm. was me being of service and, and yes, to the people that are reading it, but more than anything, being of service to source. Because mm -hmm. what happens is all these ideas and all these thoughts and all these intangibilities that we're talking about come from source, right? And source literally, they come to us as ideas and thoughts. And it's like begging us as humans, <laughs> the hands on the ground to bring it to life. And so this book came to me in meditation. I was meditating in January and got a really clear, you're writing a book this year. Wow. And when I get guidance like that, it, it also came coupled with, um, you're leaving LA for two weeks in June to write it. So one, when I get such a clear message like that, and two, when it comes with such a tangible, like, and you know, this is how it's going to look mm -hmm. in a way, because I still at the time didn't know what I was writing about or where I was going or any of those things. Mm -hmm. But when it came like that, I, I have zero choice but to say yes to that for me in my life. Right, right. Um, and well, you... so that's what I mean by being of service. And I, yes, I am also serving the people that are going to be read it reading it, but it's more than that. It's saying yes to source and saying yes to the ideas and the things that are desiring to be in the physical world. Mm -hmm. I so like that perspective. Giving, this, this giving, right, um, gives you satisfaction and the, uh, what you strive for. But is, is your giving always um, pleasant? I mean, does it always feel good? Uh, of course not. Any, yeah. Of course not. This has been one of the most painful years of my life. Mm. By saying yes to writing this book and saying yes to expanding the container that I'm living in, by saying yes to having to be this bigger voice in the world, extremely painful. Right. That's what I was like, you know, you, you like, it, and I, I kind of, I was in your shoes, right? I mean, you, you're, you have this kind of um, answer in your mind and you got yours through meditation, right? And uh, you have the drive, but you find yourself like, you know what? I'm not feeling that joy, right? You, you're like into this process, right? And you feel like, I'm just, I'm too stressful. There's anxiety and I'm not feeling much joy. Why am I pursuing this? And I'm saying this because, you know, um, we are like with the, um, we are every <coughs> hamsters, right? With, with tea. He <laughs> goes like, follow your bliss, follow your, you know, uh, whatever feels good, pleasure, um, in any moment, right? Um, uh, so well, that part, right? Um, that doesn't bother you that, okay, I'm still doing this even though I'm not enjoying this. Because for me, if it were something that came from my ego or mm -hmm. came from my human self that was like, we're going to go do this, yeah. and I was like forcing it and it wasn't being joyful, I am fully able to let that go and just be like, awesome, it doesn't feel good. I'm moving on. Mm -hmm. This book wasn't about me. Mm -hmm. I happen to be the human vessel in which it came through, but it's not about me. And so because I knew that going into it, I can't say no to it. Even in the moments when it's painful, even in the moments when my whole life looks like it's falling apart, mm -hmm. which is one of the stages of the leap, right? Your, your life, anything that's out of alignment with your new commitment has to go. And so this year, everything that worked for my business last year stopped working this year. Everything. Hmm. My training programs all shut down. My everything, my everything that worked last year, gone this year. I had a second business, gone. I had, an, I had another podcast with a business partner, gone. Um, pretty much like friendships went away. Everything that was working in my life last year stopped working this year. And the difference is I knew that it was for a reason. Yes, I totally fell into victim mode for a while and I sat on this pretty pink couch I'm sitting on and cried <laughs> for months on end about like, why is this happening to me? Mm -hmm.
But I always go back to it's not happening to me, it's happening for me. And it's happening yeah. because I've said yes to bringing this bigger vision to life. Yeah, I, I, I feel the need to comment on something. That I, I think that lots of, I think we all have a, a, an inside, an internal need, a drive to contribute uh, to something bigger. Right. And uh, for a lot of people, I think that in their heads, it, it translates into, well, I got to, uh, you know, I'm supposed to, everybody says you got to change the world, right? It's, and that means you have to be the next Steve Jobs or something. You have to create something monumental, but you don't, you can change the world and actually be changing the world in very small ways, just in, in a kind gesture to the people on the street, whatever you're contributing towards that. And, but we don't, we're not aware of that reality that 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 is contribution and I think if more people were aware that you can do all these little things and you are contributing to your friends and family and strangers in the, the world in general I think people would would feel better about who they are and, and where they are in the world yeah I've had a but, lot of people ask me like you know I talk about living a life that inspires you and a lot of people are like well what does it look like that Mm -hmm. inspirational life like what does that look like and I'm like I don't know that's not up for me to decide that's up for you to decide if that mm -hmm. looks like you're bringing a vision to life that's impacting your local PTA or your kids school or the entire globe that's up for you to just to you that's up to you to decide you know like yeah. that's and it's different for every single person you know I may be out there striving to be the next big thing in the world but that doesn't diminish that anyone else is striving to be the next big thing for two to three clients in the world. Like it's really unique and it's really yeah. individual. And if you're trying to go out there and live someone else's version of an inspirational life, you're always going to fail and you're always going to be in discomfort because it's not yours. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think that that message gets lost or it doesn't even get, presented by people who who encourage people to go out and change the world you know it's it's uh, they don't address that it doesn't have to be this huge scale yeah so. i think the world exists in in every molecule on the planet right mm -hmm. like every molecule contains the universe and so whether you're influencing one of those or a hundred million of those you're still making an impact you're still bringing service you're still change you know facilitating change so yeah i think the the micro and the macro are both very important to address and look at whatever resonates with you yeah 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 um well you know we i i used to be uh thinking that and um i guess i've modified my um approach to anything i do uh, since I don't know maybe two years now so if I uh, just sharing you know if I feel any discomfort or pain I used to be like okay well this is this pain pain is good pain means you're transforming you know the pain means you are outside your comfort zone you know so but since the, this whole thing with Abraham I'm not going to continue doing anything unless I am happy and aligned and comfortable with it and I feel good you know inside emotionally so I would do my breathing you know routines and I would uh, try maybe to read something pleasant or have a nice interaction with a positive person like yourself right and I think all these women in those examples that you're giving them in your podcast right I think that to me it was your it would be my tool to get into that state of mind uh, that I'm not doing it out of uh, the sense of duty or like and I got to get this done this task has to be done by a certain deadline it would be getting on uh, the same vibration as these women um, communicate through those podcasts and starting to think positively and and uh, get the into the energy of love and then go into that task what do you think of that getting first like I know you're going through some challenges and pain whatever but what about this approach do you think that it um, you know, uh, uh, how does that sit with you? 
I mean, I'm a huge proponent. I recommend that everyone have a daily practice, mm -hmm. whatever that looks like for you. And, you know, everyone always wants to be like, well, what does yours look like? It doesn't matter what <laughs> mine looks like, you know, like as long as you're having a practice to get into that state, to mm -hmm. connect with your heart, to be living from a place of wholeness and fullness, mm -hmm. to be, you know, really truly engaging with spirit and universe and all these things so that you can approach your life from a place of fullness, from a place of completeness, from a place of connection. And so that's something that I, I am a huge proponent of for every single person I talk to, no matter what situation they're in or anything. So for example, this morning before we talked, 10.30 here right now, I've been up since six o'clock this morning. The first thing I do every morning, meditation. I lay in bed and I do either a hypnotherapy session or meditation. Then I made myself breakfast. And then even though I didn't have time for it today, I, I have been rushing around all morning because I made my two mile walk around the lake this morning a priority because that's where I connect with nature. That's where I am able to open my heart, move my body and really truly become that open channel for my day ahead. And so whatever that looks like to you, however that plays out, you know, if it, for you it's breathing exercises and getting into that vibration, like I highly recommend that every single person have some sort of practice to get into that space every day. If there's something that's kind of like preventing you from getting into that alignment, right? How do you address this? Are you, are you like proactively like eliminating those kind of irritators from your life? Like, okay, this caused me, you know, being sad or upset or irritable, right? Or are you kind of like saying, okay, I'm just going to kind of be above that and I'm not going to remove myself from those situations. It depends on the irritator, right? Like sometimes mm -hmm. as humans, there are things that we don't get to eliminate from our life. On Tuesday, I was having such a like muggle day. I was so like, oh, this whole human thing is like such a burden to me today. <laughs> I can't even. And it was things like, going to the dentist and speaking to my vet and like all these things. And like, they were irritating and I was angry about it and I was super upset about it. And those are things that I don't get to remove myself from. Right. Like, mm -hmm. so those things, it's like, all right, they suck and it's obnoxious. And I looked at the hygienist and I was like, literally whatever you can do to get me out of here the quickest, I, I don't care. Just do your job. And I'd really rather not talk and like, let me leave quickly and that's yeah. that's where my my line is today you know and and i just i have to find a way to be pleasant within them now mm -hmm. there's other things where i'm literally out of alignment with and i cannot get back into alignment with like my second business this year it mm -hmm. took us six six months of conversation or seven months of conversation to shut it down because we were trying to figure out like you know what is out of alignment is this something that's salvageable? salvageable? Is it not? What does that look like for us to let it go? What would it look like for us to keep it? And we had those conversations. And at the end of the day, it was just like, listen, I am so far out of alignment with this. And it is so not working with everything else that I have going that I have to step away from it. It is no longer serving me. And it's actually a detriment to mm -hmm. where I'm at in my life right now. And so I don't think there's a cut and dried answer for that. I think every situation and experience is different, but you really have to tap into your heart and like see, is this something that I'm just avoiding because it's obnoxious and I don't want to deal with it? Or is it something that's truly not serving me anymore? And in that case, how can I let it go with the most ease and grace possible? Well, great answer. I, I think also there are, um, from one day to the next, you may have a different feeling about that, right? Depending on what it is. Mm -hmm. It's last week. I was totally okay with, uh, you know, the weeds in the yard, whatever it is. I don't care today for some reason it really bothers me. So now I have to do something about it. You know, what's changed. I know it's just a different day, but for some reason, you know, so that stuff is, is fluid just at least some degree. Yeah. And the big so. decisions, like I said, with closing a business, right? Like I knew I was out of alignment with it in February, but I didn't act on it. And I sat with it and I really sat with like, why am I having this discomfort? What is it stemming from? 
what does it mean and how does that look? And, and it was a slow, gradual closing process because it had to be. There were other people involved. There were clients. There were customers. There were all these other things to take into consideration. And I wanted to make sure it wasn't just a fleeting, you know, weed situation, mm -hmm. right? So, yeah. Do you find yourself with certain things getting, I, I, I'm speaking for myself, I, I, I can be tolerant of a lot and sometimes not to my best interest, but I, there are things where it's annoying, it's whatever, you know, and, and at a certain point it, it's, there's no, uh, it's like you, 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 it's the tipping point. You get over the other side of the, over the ridge on the, the mountain and, and I don't want to try to save it anymore. I don't want to, to go back, you know, yeah. I, I don't know if anybody <laughs> who else operates totally. that way, but um, yeah, there's stuff totally. that I, I just get to a point where I just got, it's not worth the fight anymore. Yeah. I mean, I had another business before this one and I closed it down. That one, I did not close down over a long period of time. I was in meditation on a Saturday, got the news that I needed to stop. And by that following Tuesday, I announced that my business was closed. Hmm. And that one I did very quickly. And I knew that I was out of alignment with that business for a long time before that. And then once I finally got the message and it was kind of a slap upside the head, it was like, what are you doing? Seriously, knock it off. <laughs> and I was like, oh, right. Okay. I got it. And that one I took action on. I had reached that tipping point and I was just done and there was no salvaging it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I might just add that, you know, in thinking about getting into alignment before you do anything at all, any step. Um, what I really liked about this approach is that, um, uh, you know, um, if, well, this, this idea that if at every little step you first get into alignment and do it with love, then you would never find yourself in a situation when things could get out of alignment. The end result will always be very positive because every little step, every component that went into it, was not out of anything else but just love and um, kindness and uh, with the sense of um, being connected to the source, right? Um, and so, it, you know, if the seed level is love, then it could not get you any discomfort and stress at the end. That's kind of, I was trying to get into. Um, I say yes and no. I mean, there have been situations <laughs> that I've approached with complete love. Mm -hmm. and they're just not a good fit. And mm -hmm. so does that mean that I did something wrong or that I approached it in the wrong manner or that I was out of alignment? No, it just means that whatever the situation was, wasn't a good fit, right? So you can approach everything with love, mm -hmm. and I don't think that necessarily removes or diminishes any pain or, you know, this business. I approached the whole thing with love, right? Mm -hmm. And closing it, there was still a grieving process that happened. There was still a sadness. There was still a letting go. There was still a, a time where I just really needed to honor the, the sadness and the hurt and the pain that was coming up around closing it. Mm -hmm. So yes and no. I, I think that the amount of which you suffer can can be manipulated if you're very much holding on to something and making mm -hmm. like having this huge attachment to it then yeah you're gonna experience a lot more pain mm -hmm. than if you're just to approach it with a, like i trust i trust that whatever is supposed to come of this situation is going to come and that doesn't mean it's without pain or sadness yeah we're yeah. human right we're here for the entire experience this is well, what that, we that's for. That's one of the questions actually that we were tackling. Um, uh, I don't know, I, sh I shared that with team. Um, you know, we are big fans of the Matrix, the movie, you know? I love that movie. Yeah, yeah. And so you're like, okay, so if you could actually get plugged in into a life, <laughs> yeah, like, a, but it's not a real life, it's a virtual uh, environment, the machine. Right. Well, we already are, aren't we? I mean, that's what we we're are, all but ours, that's the debate. Ours, ours got the, the whole polyter of experiences, right? But here is the one where you could have gotten, I mean, you could get any life that you're thinking of as like perfect. Any desire is accomplished, pleasure. Um, and you never know that this is a virtual reality. And you don't know that you made that decision that you decided to go and live there. 
right? Um, would you decide to plug in into something like that? Well, I clearly have. I'm here. We're all here, right? <laughs> like I clearly have a She came on our show, man. And what what else is there? There's like, your answer. You know, well, we in our world you see the, the pain and suffering are present, very much present and, and used as a as a tool to transform us, right? To get us into the right path and the right understanding. The virtual reality that I'm talking about is there is no pain and suffering, it's all pleasure, just joy. Pure joy in every moment. I mean I think there is a way to find pure joy in pain and suffering. It's all in your ah, perspective. Mm -hmm. Like I, even this year, as I was on my couch crying for months on end, right? I was able to find joy. You guys, if you're watching this on video, have seen my cat pop in a few times. Mm -hmm. Here she is. This is Oliver. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and when I'm on my couch, the, these, my two cats know, like they're super intuitive, right? Animals are amazing. And they come and they lay with me and they purr and they love on me. And I mean, mostly probably for super selfish reasons, but whatever, <laughs> you know, like I, there's ways to find joy within the pain and suffering. Yeah. And there's ways to understand and remember that this isn't happening for me. It's or to me, it's happening for me. Right. And mm -hmm. that's sometimes easier said than done. We all have our moments, but you know, I, there's, so there's a lot of things happening right now with the virtual reality stuff coming and with spirituality and all these things where everyone's like, everything, you know, I don't want to talk about negative things. It lowers yeah. my vibe, blah, 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 blah. We signed up for this. I signed up for the totality of the human experience. Mm -hmm. From spirit to human, I signed up for the entire spectrum. This is what we came here to experience. So all of this virtual reality stuff where people are talking about, there's going to be a time I just heard someone speak where we'll be able to literally download our brain and like have consciousness like on a hard yeah. drive. Right. And, what and life do you want to, what life do you want to live? Yeah. And our yeah, bodies will be? matter and all this stuff, like all these things. And, and my answer to that is I'm sure that's going to happen. And then I'm sure it's going to be great. And all this virtual reality stuff, I have zero interest in it because when I came into this body, I agreed to come to experience the spectrum of humanity, the highs, the lows, and everything in between. Does it suck some days? Yeah, it does. And I'm still here and I'm still showing up. And as much as I've wanted out on so many occasions, I'm committed to living whatever I have planned for this mm -hmm. life. So you're coming really? back to your inner being and having seen all the pain and suffering, uh, you know, and you're talking about, we are here blessed in, in the U.S., right? But I mean, there's a lot of devastation, uh, you know, people dying of hunger, um, people below the poverty line uh, everywhere. I mean, you're coming back to your source and you're saying, yeah, I committed to this, but I mean, can't we get something that is more humane does the pain have to go to such um distances to make a point i mean why do we need to have torture in i mean this is a humans are an interesting interesting species and how we learn is through pain i don't ever i have never had a client come to me and be mm -hmm. like i want to transform i'm in such a great place mm -hmm. we don't we unfortunately don't learn through pleasure as a species for whatever reason yeah. we just don't there is a reason that the president of the united states right now is who he is because we didn't learn through obama we we didn't yeah yeah and it's unfortunate that our humanity has chosen to learn this way um and you know it's probably spiraled into greater depths as the longer humanity has been on this planet and the longer time has gone on but, um, you know, that's why I remain committed to being the channel for source and whatever is asked of me, I will do, you know, I've never been asked to go to another country and, and do healing there. But if I am, well, let them, I mean, if they don't get it, if they don't get those lessons, uh, you're here in this universe, I'm here in this universe. We understand, um, that helping others is the most fulfilling thing in this world that kindness and love that's what we need paradise is possible on this earth they don't get it 
I mean, uh, I have this um, feeling that I don't want to participate in your lesson taking because I already have my lesson. So I'm just going to concentrate on my pleasure and joy and I'm going to go about my life without getting involved with you guys because you're just not up to speed with me. You know, why even engage in the system that causes pain and suffering, you know? Because it's up to us as light workers to transform that. Be, that's our mission. That's why you're doing this. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But I mean, apparently, <laughs> all that has been done doesn't, you know, I mean, it's a slow, slow process. Our lifetime will not be enough to transform these people. Hi, this is Tim Starr. Thanks for joining me and Gabi on the, the universe between your ears. We really appreciate you taking the time to hang out with us for a little while. And we'd like to see you again. So be sure to subscribe wherever it is you're consuming the podcast from, whether it's YouTube or Stitcher or iTunes or whatever the hell else is out there. We want to see you again. We also want to hear from you. So let us know what you think of each episode. Let us know if you've got an idea for a future episode that you think would be just killer. Absolutely, let us know. All right. Thanks again, and we will see you next time around. Bye-bye.